All right, down here at the airport, you can see the cowlings off the airplane and you're wondering, uh, is there something wrong with it that's bad? No, it's just that we did the annual inspection, so we had to take the cowling off. Uh, to be able to inspect the engine, there's a lot of inspection plates underneath the wing, take the seats out. It's kind of a process, but anyhow, clean bill of health on the airplane. And I just wanted to show you what is inside the engine cowling because when I was a kid, my instructor said, you know, hey man, uh, take a look at here inside the engine and you can see, you know, you can take a look and it was a tiny little hole right up here that he was saying, look down through that hole and just make sure that everything's connected, right? And you're like, you look down this hole and it's just black. So I had no idea really for years until I saw an airplane with the cowling off. And even then I had no idea what this stuff was. So, but over time, I've spent so much time with the mechanic doing the inspections that I've learned uh, how these different various systems work. So let me show you some of this stuff. To begin with, inside the uh, cockpit, there's an engine RPM gauge. And this has been a gauge of controversy for, for a long time where everybody says on this gauge there's a green arc on it and it's called normal operating area. And everyone says, yeah, that normal operating area is so you don't pick up carburetor icing. Well, this airplane has a carburetor down at the bottom of the thing, right? It sucks in air from the front right here and invisible moisture between 20 degrees and 70 degrees. It, has a, it can have a tendency to ice up inside the carburetor. Well, if it ices up inside the carb, guess what happens? You're not going to get as much air, right? So, so there's a way to get rid of it through carburetor icing or carburetor heat. It's on the other side. I'll show you what that's all about. But let me show you that green gauge inside the uh, airplane, what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the RPM gauge that I'm talking about, right? It doesn't go to 3,500 RPM, the engine will blow up. But you see this green arc right here that goes between 2,100 and 2,700? In reading different forums, a lot of people have always said that that green arc is down there, so you're not operating. You have to operate in that area basically to avoid help avoid carburetor ice, and that's not right at all. I thought about it, and I'm like, well, you're operating this engine out of that green arc when you're coming in for a landing, so are you more susceptible to carburetor icing? And the answer is no. Um, I called a friend of mine at Cessna. Uh, after reading this and I thought, wow, what is that thing there for? So it's, I started laughing when I found out. What it is, in the cruise performance charts of the airplane, they only put the cruise performance between 2100 RPM and 2700 RPM. And the reason is, is they figured that you would never fly the airplane in cruise with less than 2100 RPM because less than 2100 RPM the nose is pitched up so high, you're just flying through the air so inefficiently, they were like, why would we ever, why would we ever put the cruise, cruise performance uh, for that RPM, right? Why would we put it in for 1700 RPM? The nose would be way up and you're flying like this. Well, the whole idea behind buying an airplane is going fast, right? So they didn't do the cruise performance for anything less. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in the pilot's operating handbook. Okay, so here's the pilot's operating handbook and we're looking at our cruise performance right here. Look down here, this is the different altitudes you'd operate. Pressure altitude, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, up to 12,000 feet, right? Well, when you look in here, RPM, 2,500 RPM to 2,100 RPM, nothing less. At 4,000 feet, 2,550 to 2,100 RPM. So look at 2,100 RPM, it's a cold day, 20 degree below standard. Standard is 59 degrees and 20 degrees above. So that's a cold day, normal day, and hot day. But look down here at 2100 RPM, you got 50% of your horsepower. You're going at 95 knots, and you're only burning 5.8 gallons. But they didn't put it at 20, 19, 18 because they just figured that you're gonna cruise in this range. What the Cessna guy told me was that they could have made that green arc all the way down to zero if they wanted to, but you know, how are you gonna cruise at less than, at less than, you know, I mean, in this case, 2100 RPM. And if they could put it down to zero where your fuel consumption would be super low and you're going downhill, but you're not in cruise, are you? So these are cruise performance numbers. And you need these cruise performance numbers when you're determining what your fuel burn is gonna be over the length of your trip, right? So that's why it goes down to 2100 RPM. 2100 RPM. It has absolutely nothing to do with carburetor icing. So if somebody uh, asks you that, just tell them, I talked to Cessna and Cessna says that's why they did it. <laughs> so anyhow, that, that, that solves that mystery. Okay, the next one has to do with starting the engine and there's a throttle in this airplane and then there's a prime knob down here, I'll show you in a second. 
uh, the the throttle is connected to the carburetor, right? So that you know, the more you shove it in, the more fuel it's going to get. The prime knob is connected to a to a uh, basically a little tube that pumps gas into the cylinder. Um, a friend of mine and I were talking about this the other day, and he brought it up. And every time I've started these airplanes, it says prime the airplane. You know, four primes, four good swipes of prime to get some fuel into the cylinder. And we were talking about, you know, the difference between using the throttle to pump fuel into the carburetor versus pumping fuel into the cylinder. So take a look at this. So here I've got the throttle, right? So if I'm pumped, the mixture's off so there's no fuel going in it. But if I sit here on the ground and pump this thing in and out, all I'm doing is putting fuel into the carburetor. Well, the carburetor's on the bottom of the engine, so guess what's probably gonna happen? The fuel's gonna just start running out the bottom of the engine, right? Well, the primer over here, you can see it, is this pulls out, you wait for it to fill up with fuel, and then you push it in. You can kind of hear a weird little squealy noise when you do that. But this fuel right here, I'll show you outside where the, what happens when you're pushing on this prime knob. Okay, so this down here is a fuel filter, right? It's the lowest point in the fuel system, so all the crap, you know, water and whatever stuff floating around in the fuel, water's heavier than fuel, so it's gonna wind up, should wind up down here. You'll still find some in the tanks, that's why you drain them before you take off. But anyhow, you can see down here, this knob right here has to do with on top of the engine, there's a, a thing you can pull out and fuel will actually shoot out the bottom of this tube right here. Nice to have a cup to catch it uh, so it doesn't go all over the ramp, but that's how you strain the fuel. So right here, when you push, when you pull the prime knob, it's basically sucking fuel out of this, and then it runs into the, the uh, firewall. So you can see where it runs into the firewall, and then it actually comes back out. Hard to see, but the fuel goes in here to the firewall, sucks in, and then right here, it comes out of the firewall so it sucks into the little pump and then it gets pushed back out when you shove that in and it comes around this way and it's really difficult to see this line but it's right here it comes out comes over here out here and actually goes up into the cylinder so when you're priming the airplane inside on the prime knob that fuel it's it just it, this engine in particular it goes into this cylinder right here other aircraft, my mechanic was telling me that it actually goes into all four cylinders, but for whatever reason, grease, uh, for whatever reason, it just goes into the cylinder. So you can see down here, the carburetor's right here. So, you know, if you're pumping, if you're using the throttle and you're just pumping a bunch of fuel in it, you can see the throttle cable on the back side of that. You're just pumping all this fuel into the carburetor and eventually, look at it, it's not on top of the engine, it's on the bottom, it's just gonna dri dri dribble right out. According to the mechanic, I've never done it because I've always used the prime knob, but anyhow, that's how that works. Next for interesting, cool factoids, it's one of these, I can't remember which one it is, but when you turn the master switch on, you hear a click, that's what this, it's either one of these, that's what's clicking, so electrical power being applied to the airplane. Then right here you can see, here's the starter right here, I shot a video of it and I'll put the clip in there, but it's really cool because this, this wheel comes shooting out, grabs that thing, and once it starts, this thing sucks back in. So I shot it in 120 frames a second and slowed it down, so I'll put that up. All right, this next one has to do with cabin heat. And, and you wonder, you know, in, in cabin heat, there's a, an issue with carbon uh, monoxide, dioxide, whatever it is, the one that'll put you to sleep and slowly kill you. Um, that's why they have little little things inside, these little round things inside the cockpit that show you if you're getting carbon monoxide, dioxide, what, whichever one it is, it's carbon something. So anyhow, you can see here, here's the carburetor, or here's the exhaust pipe, right? Take a close look and you can see that the exhaust is in there, but there's a shroud around that exhaust and, and warm air comes off of the exhaust pipe. It's clean air, there's no, there's no stuff in, no bad stuff in it. But normally it vents out right here. The warm air just comes in and it just vents right out. And I'll show you what happens when you pull the, uh, the uh, knob to get heat into the cockpit. Okay, I'm pulling the valve right now for the cabin heat. So you can see how this, this valve is closed. It's not completely, I pulled it out as far as this, but it's an old airplane. But anyhow, the heat works really good, but the engine's got to be warm. But you can see how this thing rotates up and then all the heat just flows right into the cockpit. Kind of cool. Now I'll go ahead and close that. Then just some of the other stuff in here, you can see that here's the magneto harness right here. 
And so, you know, the, the wires come off two spark plugs per cylinder, which is good for, if, you know, if, uh, burning fuel efficiency and redundancy. This, this bad boy is an oil cooler, oil cooler right here comes off. You can see the oil pump where the oil filter is right here. Brand new oil in this baby. I'm going to go fly it. But yeah, you can see here's the oil, 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 oil cooler right here. And then not super easy to see, but here's the vacuum pump right here for your instruments. And the last thing on our uh, engine, uh, engine tour of the day is uh, this, believe it or not, is the carburetor heat. When you pull the carburetor heat knob on in the airplane, when you pull, yeah, when you pull the carb heat knob on in the airplane, there's a butterfly valve in the carburetor and that I'll, the, normally air is flowing in from the air filter right underneath the, the prop. That's where it's getting its air, nice cool air, right? Well, when you pull a carburetor heat, the butterfly valve now draws its air from right here. And I'll show you in a close up exactly what it's doing. You can see right here that this is part of the exhaust, right? So look what happens when you're sucking in air from here. It's just air from inside the cowling that flows past the exhaust into here, down into the carburetor. And, uh, and that's where you get the carburetor, that's where you get carburetor heat from inside the cowling. So anyhow, that's it. That's, uh, that's kind of what's inside the engine. I, I just thought I'd give you a look at it because a lot of times, again, when I was a kid, I was like 15 years old, here goes a big ass, there goes a 7.3 Max. But again, so when I was a kid, you know, I was 15 years old and my instructor said, that oil thing's right up here. You know, it's a tiny little thing where you're pulling the dipstick out, right? It's this tiny hole and that's where you pour the oil out. Well, that thing's only this big. And he said, yeah, look down in there and make sure everything's secure. And uh, you can't even see down in there. So it's kind of a, a I don't know. I wish it was designed this way that you could have the cowl open like this so you could actually see what's in there. But on Cessnas, that's just the way they designed it. So um, yeah, it's interesting to kind of have some idea of what's in there. And now you kind of have a, a good idea. I'm not a, obviously a mechanic, so my explanations aren't um, super detailed, but uh, you get the gist of it. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the tour. See ya.